Welcome, Bruce and Ed. Welcome. Happy to see you here. I'm Bruce. And I'm Ed. And we are live in New York. <laughs> How are you? Uh, let's see. We, we are, we're broadcasting live. We broadcast live on Ustream. We live at breadtv.com. That's B-R-E-D-T-V.com. And uh, you can always go there. And if you happen to be awake and around at 10 a.m. New York time, 7 a.m. L.A. time, just go to breadtv.com. And there's a link that shows you what time that is in your city. And there's a link also right below that, that or above that, that says uh, watch live. So you can watch live and uh, join us. We, we broadcast live on Ustream. But if you go to bredtv.com, there's a link that says watch live, and that'll take you straight to the right place on Ustream. Otherwise, it's you're going to be searching around. Mm-hmm. So we are uh, we are live. Okay, just wanted to make sure <laughs> we're, we're broadcasting. Wait a minute. All right. Today's episode is sponsored by Arvix Web Hosting and uh, Dropbox, and also Mountain Rose Herbs. So if you want to watch us live, you can also chat with us live, like he was just saying, during the show, or even call in on Skype. And just follow the instructions on the webpage at breadtv.com and to find out. And we just got a new way to get a hold of us as well, which is a new phone number. And uh, the number is 646-770-BRED. So yes. that's just another way <laughs> of many. So if you want to, is that what you just said? That if you want to chat with us live, just mm-hmm. go to breadtv.com and click uh, the li- watch live. And if you watch live, obviously the chat room's there. When you come up on the Ustream page, there's a uh, there's a section on the right half that says social stream. I, I don't know why it's on default social stream, but you click on the chat button and it'll take you into a chat room. And uh, that's a great way to talk to us. We'll. Uh, Oh, there's an ad for Metro PCS. How interesting on the on the Ustream page. We talk about them a lot. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. we'll we'll glance into the chat room all the way, you know, during during every episode, and um, and we'll be able to read what you're saying, you know, what you're giving us your feedback or your comments, questions or whatever. Normally, we're going to have a guest often right here on uh, Skype behind us on the big screen behind us. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. The um, I wanted to, uh, let's see, today's episode, by the way, is sponsored by Arvix Web Hosting. Let me bring that up and I'll show you what they look like. Um, Hold on, hold on, hold on. There, okay, Arvix Web Hosting. It's A-R-V-I-X-E Web Hosting and Dropbox Mm -hmm. and Mountain Rose Herbs. We'll tell you more about those later. I already said that, but you can say it again. All right. Cool. <laughs> I wasn't listening. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, start off today's show by talking about... I, I received a couple emails um, about the production quality of this show, and I wanted to uh, address that. The um, comments about you know the lighting and, the, and when you're reading something, it looks like you're reading and things like that. I wanted to explain that this show, this is not my main talk show. This is our, uh, we call it a coffee chat reality show. It's raw, unscripted, unedited, unrehearsed, and all that. It's, it really is a reality show. It's like having coffee with Bruce and Ed in the morning. So you never know what we're going to say. You never know what, we're, what subjects are going to come up, what we're going to talk about. And um, the, um, we, have a, we tried to improve the lighting. We, we actually tried taping in the evening. It works a lot better when it's during the day, when you've got the daylight coming in, and we've situated the lighting, so hopefully that's better. We've tried to improve the audio because now we have a studio condenser mic, and if we, talk, if we put our mouth close enough to it, it actually sounds pretty good, I think. You'll agree? Yes. Um, but, you know... Um, we're not gonna. Tr- when we're reading something, it's gonna look like we're reading something because we're not trying to pretend like we're not reading something. We're not gonna use a fancy teleprompter. We're not gonna do fancy video editing, editing or anything because this is a live reality show and it's Monday through Friday every single day, mm-hmm. um, five a week. So 
there's really not time to do the video editing and all that, and it's not necessary. I think it's kind of fun that it is reality. It's just yeah. totally, you know, no, casual. No, no script or anything to follow, and if we get, you know, caught up on a tangent, then it's okay. It's not rehearsed. It's not, like I said, not edited and all that. Um, but what is interesting that a lot of people don't know at some point we're going to talk about we're probably going to do some how-to series about how to create your own show if you wanted to create a talk show on whatever topic you're interested in uh, or you may be an expert on or whatever but most people would be shocked at how much work it is it really is a lot of work even if you just do a bare bones um, you know just the essential elements of a video netcast um, if you're, you know, without the CBS camera crews to help us, it, it's just, you know, a microphone and some PCs and a camera. And it sounds really simple, but once you start adding everything, I mean, anybody can record an audio podcast. It's super simple. Anybody can take one of these flip cameras or even your new phones and take a video and upload it to YouTube. That's very simple. But when you start um, adding in, you know, a Skype guests with the audio you're streaming it live, you're doing it five days a week, and you're making it available as a video podcast on iTunes, an audio podcast on iTunes, and on YouTube in full length. It becomes a real project, even without any editing or any, right. you know. I mean, <laughs> our preparation consists of, uh, for the show itself, consists of just listing ideas of things to talk about and, and lining up guests. But the, um, so that's real, real simple and basic. But the actual studio here, I mean, as soon as Ed vacuums, I mean, everything gets discombobulated. And it, it takes a lot. If you could see this, one of these days we'll take the camera around and show you <laughs> this <laughs> setup in our, in our Manhattan apartment of what it looks like. All the wires and the cables and the, the monitors everywhere. I mean, it's, it's not overkill. I mean, it's really pretty much everything is bare bones, but it's essential to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And like professional broadcasters are going to say, uh, you know, oh my gosh, that is bare bones. You're just taking one audio input and putting it into Adobe Flash Media Encoder, and and you know, it's really, really bare bones essential. It really, and we're only using one camera uh, mm -hmm. for the for the show itself. So it's uh, even though it's that bare essential, it's a lot of an. It's very involved to set yeah. it all up. So anyway, and that's just the pre stuff, and then the post post stuff. Post-production, yeah. I guess, is another part of it, which is not hard either. It's just time-consuming. Right, and we're like I said, for this show, <clears throat> we're not doing any editing. We're, we're not. I mean, most most uh, video shows and things, uh, you know, people put it into a video editor, and as people know, I mean, you who have done this, you take um, 20 minutes of video might take, you know. Eight ten hours of video editing if you want to make it look really really good. And some people who get into video blogging and things uh, often a, a mis common mistake they make, or uh, not a mistake, but maybe a trap they fall into, or whatever. Maybe it's good or bad, depends on how you look at it. But they are very um, they're looking at the video of themselves and they're super hypercritical of themselves, which is very normal. Mm -hmm. You know, people look at themselves and go, "Oh my God, I can't believe <laughs> I said um um uh uh forty times." <laughs> so they they get very concerned about how they look and how they sound, which is natural. Then they so they take the video editor and they start snipping it down to just the little tiny snippets of sentences <laughs> that sound good. And they cut out all the rest in between. And then they take so they take an hour of video and cut it down to like four minutes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So then it's like da 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 It's just like what they're saying, what they're saying, what they're saying. And it looks like, I don't know, weird, this robotic thing. You see a lot of that on YouTube, and it's actually become like a style. But because people can edit things so much that they feel they look better, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the problem, there's really no problem with that if you have the time. That's right. the thing. If you're going to do this Monday through Friday, five days a week, you know, you'd spend it would be all the rest of the hours to do the video editing every single day. And I hate video editing because it's very time consuming. It's fun if you're going to work on a project that is, you know, uh, going to be a big project that is like a film or something, some kind of documentary or something that's fun, then it's a major project. But if you're going to do something every day, I don't want to do any video editing. I don't even want to cut off the, well, I might want to cut off the beginning and the end. We'll talk about that later. But um, I don't want to do any editing because. It takes so much time. You have to watch the thing over and over and over. 
and you, you have to, you know, you're also, when you bring it into a video editor and then you're, you have to, um, what do they call it, rendering it again, you're re-encoding it, you're losing quality, and, you know, you have to really know what you're doing. And that's a whole, like, science in and of itself. But the main thing is the time that's, in, that's involved, all the time and labor, which we don't have time for, really. We would have no life. That would be all we did mm -hmm. if we edited it every single day. Right, so... We don't want to do that. <laughs> so that's the point. That's why we only have one camera. We don't have like a three camera setup. We don't have cameramen and all that. I mean, you know, that's not the point of this production. And we, when we're reading, it will look like we're reading because we are reading. We're not trying to hide it. Right. Except if you're listening only by audio, then you would never know. That's right. Well, you'll <laughs> be able to tell anyway. You can tell because, you know, you can tell when someone's reading anyway. If Oprah's standing there looking at the camera and going on and on and on and on, she is reading it. She's reading it on a teleprompter. I mean, it's come on, it's obvious. But we're not trying to be a professional, highly produced show. This is just reality show. Fun. So yeah, totally fun, totally casual. You never know what we're gonna say or so. who's gonna pop up and ask what kind of questions. So as Ed mentioned, we have a new, brand new viewer call-in number. So when we're when you're watching live, you can actually call this number and be on the air and and give us feedback and ask questions and stuff of us and our guests and or our guests um, so and that number is six four six seven seven oh bread which is spells out six four six seven seven oh two seven three three and there it is now <laughs> somebody's calling it so that's it you want to, let's see shall we answer it uh, it's an eight six six yeah I let's see that hello one. hello hello nope okay. okay I don't know what it was anyway um, but that's the call-in number. So we're going to have it set up so there's a speakerphone and you'll be able to actually call in live when we're on the air. And when we're not on the air, if you're not watching live, it doesn't matter. You can call in and leave a feedback voicemail mm -hmm. and uh, just leave a recorded message. And then the next show will play your voicemail and discuss what you said or answer your questions or whatever that may be. So again, the number, it's on the website, bredtv.com, and it's the phone number, 646-770-BRED. Right. All right. So the next thing I wanted to bring up is uh, guest co-hosts. We're, we're really excited to, um, to have people call us or arrange in advance to be sort of a guest co-host for the day. So when we bring up topics, Ed and I are discussing them with a guest co-host, which could be you. So if you're interested in just chatting with us uh, via Skype, if all you have to have is Skype. Right. You go to skype, skype.com. Download Skype if you don't have it, and a webcam. That's all you need, with a microphone, of course, and or headphones or something. But you need a webcam and Skype, and then you'll be up here. You're, you'll appear bigger than life, and they'll hear you crystal clear, and you'll look great. And then the three of us can chat. So three, or if there's two of you, four, you know, four of us, whatever. But we we're interested in uh, guest co-hosts for the day. So if you're interested in doing that, give us an email at breadchat at gmail .com. B-R-E-D-C-H-A-T at gmail.com. Send us an email and let us know of your interest to do that, and we'll talk about it, and we'll um, perhaps schedule you to be on with us soon. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun. It's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure, with three people, for sure. Now, the next topic is um, Ed's new phone. We, <laughs> you know, the other day we were talking about what smartphone to buy. <clears throat> well, apparently, Ed got influenced. He decided finally... It's time to upgrade from his first generation iPhone. I yeah. want to show it to you. No, I already had made the decision. <laughs> it's just I wasn't sure which one or when I would get it. But um, but I want to. I have to get a new phone at this. I point. I want to show them. This is this is his uh, his iPhone. This is his first generation iPhone, and as you can see, <laughs> he's got a jury rig with a paper clip because. The battery, you know, the batteries on these things, they, when the battery goes, the whole phone goes in the trash. Basically, it's useless because you cannot change the battery in the sense that people say, oh, you can change the battery. Yeah, you can send it in and have the battery changed or take it to the Apple store and have it changed. But it costs about the same price to have them put a new battery in it as it does to buy a brand new iPhone. It's like $99. Right. And with a contract, it's like $99 to buy a new iPhone, you know, the, the small memory size, whatever. So, of course, what they do is, um, this is a product called Mophie, which, by the way, 
is excellent. See, there's a little button on the back, and it's got four lights. It tells you how how charged it is. And what it is, it's this little case, um, slightly thicker than a normal case on the bottom. And what it is, it's actually a battery. And I don't know if you can see that, but the connector is right in there, and it slides in like a skin. The phone slides right into it, and then it plugs in. Now this is, wait a minute, I have to unplug it because I've got all this stuff on it. But anyway, you see how it, the phone just slides right in and it's an extra battery pack and it works great. Yeah. So that's like where... Lately, I can't go anywhere without that battery pack. Right, because now his internal battery is fried and, and now he's pretty much relying only on the Mophie. Uh, it's no, M-O-P-H-I. not completely, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just shuts down in the middle of an application that I'm using. It's just... Mm-hmm. Crazy. I, I can't stand it actually. So and so Mophi is M O P H I E dot com. I, I'm assuming it's dot com. But anyway, just Google M O P H I E. It's a great product. If you have an iPhone, you really can't do without it because if you use it at all over time, I mean for me it was less than a year that the, the iPhone lasted because of the battery. Um, for him it's lasted a lot longer because he doesn't use it obsessively like I do. Right. But now and now the cord apparently has a little yeah, I can't. Uh, when I put the cord in, I have to like bend it a certain way, and I can't be find anything like that this. puts enough pressure in it to keep it on. So he's using a paper clip to keep it on. But anyway, all of that is going to be a thing of the past as of tomorrow. I know. And my little nine, eight-year or nine-year-old nephew. Last time I saw him, he's like, "Can I have your phone when I get when you get a new phone?" And I said yes to him, but now I'm like, man, I really don't want to give him that phone because it's such a pain. I just don't think it's a good idea. Just <laughs> he's gonna have to keep sake. it. He's gonna have to keep it plugged in all the time, and then hold the bottom connector to keep it charged. Yeah, that's but ridiculous. D- now, can a nine-year-old sign co- sign a contract with AT and T? No, <laughs> no, he'll just probably, obviously, uh, if he gets it at all, he'll just use it as a little game toy, which is really what. In my opinion, that's what the iPhone is. Anyway, it's a it's an expensive Game Boy with a really really cheap phone built in. Yeah, that's why he wants it because he wants to be able to play and and download apps and have your passcode so he can charge it up on you. <laughs> but tomorrow, Ed is getting the Evo, the HTC Evo. We went yesterday and um, went to Best Buy. And how many hours were we sitting there playing with the with the Evo? They had a dis- no, an actual like display 40 model. Minutes. Really, <laughs> it seemed like a couple hours to me. But we were playing with the display model. Let's see if they have a picture. Evo. Maybe I have to spell it right. HTC Evo. There we go. Um, hmm. Well, I guess that's a good picture, as good as any. But um, yeah. so anyway, the HTC Evo is amazing. This amazing phone. Um, it's the the basic I have the Motorola Droid, and you know I guess the my abbreviated version of what that means is um, the HTC Incredible through Verizon, kind of like doubled all the specs. It's fantastic. Um, it beat the Droid. Well now HTC, the same manufacturer, actually has leapfrog themselves with this HTC Evo, which is kind of like double the specs again over the incredible and it's amazing the HTC Evo yeah, is amazing it really is. it's available on Sprint and you know don't get everybody's so attached to their carrier don't worry about that as long as it's one of the, the big four it's going to be fine You're, it's going to work and the this particular one they're calling it 4G because it's the the first Android phone I think that's using WiMAX they call 4G, so they're expanding the network, they're building it out, and many cities have 4G, and if you have it, it works great. But it doesn't matter. If it doesn't have it, you're still using it at 3G. It's the same as all the other phones. So worst case scenario, it's as fast as all the other phones. Now, we're here in Manhattan, yeah. and we tried it at the Best Buy store, and it was really, really fast. Yeah. Now, and you know, the, the processor is so fast that yeah. it makes your internet speed seem faster. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the processor is so fast that there's just no delay and you, and I think that you start to realize that it's not just the internet speed that's keep that pokes along with these phones the processor is, is half of it so um, because this processor is so lightning fast the internet seemed really really fast Another 1 gigahertz yeah snapdragon but the thing is the um, that this is the first version of Android that ha- is uh, they call it Froyo. That's the new version, and it has 
um, what they call a MiFi built in. MiFi makes your, if you can imagine, uh, your your phone is an internet device. Imagine if there was a wireless Wi-Fi router built in, and that's what MiFi is. So you just turn this on, which we did. We just oh, go to settings, go to the they call it Sprint Hotspot or something. Make it into a hotspot. You turn on the setting, and boom, it's a router. It's a Wi-Fi router. So I think it's up to six devices or some number Eight of de- devices. Whatever it is, I don't know. I quote it wrong, but whatever number of adv- devices can now connect to your phone via Wi-Fi. So you're at brunch, <laughs> and everybody at the table, no matter whether they're using an iPhone or an Android or a BlackBerry or a laptop or anything, they yeah. can all connect to the Internet through Wi-Fi through your Android phone. I love thing. that. That's it's awesome. It's amazing. It's absolutely, and we, while we're sitting there, okay, we had the Evo in, he, sitting here. Well, we connected his iPhone to it by Wi-Fi, and my uh, Motorola Droid via Wi-Fi to it. We were both using our own phones on Wi-Fi through this device, and it was really, really fast. It was just as fast as Wi-Fi at home. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. It was slick, slick, slick. And that was only on 3G, yeah. not 4G. So and Some people call that tethering, I guess. It's the same thing. Well, it's a little different. Tethering, sim- similar. Tethering is where you actually can plug it in with a cable to your laptop and get internet. Mm-hmm. And this is... Beyond that, this is like tethering via Wi-Fi with multiple units. Right. So it's like more advanced than tethering. It's really, really slick. So you can see the the near future, by the end of the summer, basically, no matter what, when you're, um, you know, you're at brunch or you're at somebody's house or you're at the beach or wherever you are, <laughs> if any one person in your group has an Android Froyo unit. Basically, everybody in your whole group now has Wi-Fi. Isn't that awesome? Yes. It's like it's like Matt. We were we've always fantasized about having Wi-Fi everywhere, and and everybody, great minds, have tried to figure out how can we put Wi-Fi routers on every re- traffic light on every corner of every city. I mean, Google will try to do that. Well, now it's brilliant. They they've combined cell phone data with the Wi-Fi technology so that it's uh, it's cell phone data down to the phone and then Wi-Fi to all the other devices. It's mm-hmm. brilliant. It's yes, absolutely it br- so exciting. <laughs> and the know. other part of this phone that I'm excited about, which we probably mentioned it last time because it's such an obvious one, uh, it's the HDMI um, uh, port that it has output. And uh, so you can film your own video or you can download any video and then connect the from your phone, connect a wire to your television or to another HDMI <coughs> device and watch it on the big screen, which is like a TiVo. Right. So if, if, if you if you follow what he's saying, HDMI is the high definition video signal that goes into your big 53 inch HD flat screen on your wall. That's HDMI that comes out of your cable box or your computer or whatever. This little phone has HDMI out so you can have a movie on your phone and you can be at somebody's house and just plug it in HDMI right into their HDTV and see it high definition video on any device any de- any HDTV the other thing is that it has the the front end of that which is the video camera of course most all these phones have video cameras now but this one it has a high definition 720p video camera in it so you're holding it and you're actually it's a video camera too. It's just, it's this is like Jetsons. It's right out of the future. This is amazing. Yeah, it is. And with that super fast processor, it actually works. Now that's the other thing because <laughs> yeah. a, a lot of these, you know, they have, you know, they have it. They have the specs, but they don't really work that great. Like the camera on the Motorola Droid. I love the Motorola Droid, and I love almost everything about it. But the camera, mm, not so great. I, I don't know. Maybe it's me, but I don't. I'm not crazy about it. But this one, oh my gosh! We're sitting there in the store taking HD video and talking, and then we play it back. And it also has this little kickstand, which everybody talks about, because you can just set it on this stand, and it just sits there on the table, like like a little portable TV. And you're watching it in HD, and you plug it in with the HDMI, and you're going to watch it on the huge HD TV screen in high definition from 
your phone, mm-hmm. which is also also your Wi-Fi hotspot. And these are just two of the features. Like yeah. it's it's and amazing. Thing, yeah, like YouTube, you can go to YouTube and get the actual like HD yeah, well, quality video. YouTube HD. And you can That's watch right. it on That's HD right. Yeah, you, YouTube video. supports up to 720p. So there it is. The 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 highest level that YouTube can support is now equal to the highest level that this phone can take. So mm-hmm. you can take 720p video on your phone and upload it directly to YouTube. Oh my gosh! We might even use it to, to tape our show. We might yeah. very well replace our camera with this thing. <laughs> I don't know how. We're gonna have to find out if there's a tripod attachment. That'll be interesting. Yeah. But the, there's other things too. Yeah. Like there's a camera on the front as well as the back. What is it? Like eight megapixel on the back? And mm-hmm. I don't remember. But I'm not gonna quote spe- specs. You can just Google HTC EVO Evo. And but there's a camera right here on the front. And it has video calling. It's not enabled right away, but it will be soon, Sprint says. But if, ever, if somebody else has the same phone, they can sit there and it's like Skype. You can video call. Right. And that's just so cool. I mean, it's about mm-hmm. time. How many, how many years have we been talking about that? Yeah. You know, they've had Which means they can, they can see you and you can see them right. while they're speaking to you. Yeah, that's what I meant. I guess they didn't explain it. But you can see each other, just like Skype. Yeah. <laughs> a video call, vi- you know, video telephone. It's like video conferencing. In your hand. Right. In your hand. It's crazy. Oh, you know, I wonder how long it'll be, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder how long it'll be before that's impl- integrated with Skype and all that so that you could video call with Skype. They're, you know it's open source. They're going to have to. They've got Skype on these things. They're going to have to tie that. Ca- you know, I'll bet you anyway, I'll bet you anything it's already in the works because if you can video call through that, you can certainly video call through Skype. That's slick. That's really slick. Yeah, it's... Okay. Yeah, I wanted to not talk about it till when I have it in my hand, <laughs> but it's too exciting to not talk about oh. it because probably everyone's talking about it. Yeah, we'll be talking about it quite a bit, I have a feeling, in the coming mm-hmm. days. But now I wanted to take a moment and uh, just, again, thank our sponsors for uh, supporting us and uh, yes. sponsoring our show. Thank you very much. <laughs> the, uh, the first one is Arvix Web Hosting. Um, it's A-R-V-I-X-E. Dot com. Dot com. Arvix is awesome. Um, and I'm not just saying that because they're a sponsor. I'm saying that because I love them. We uh, have gone through the process of switching, I don't know how many domains. We've got dozens and dozens of dot com domain names. And we have, uh, we're in the, almost have them all switched over to Arvix now. And uh, we love this hosting company because mainly because of their support. You call them 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, seven days a week, and you're going to get a live human being here in this country who speaks clearly in plain, simple <laughs> English. Um, even though they're very technical, they speak your language. They speak really, really simple, and you can explain to them what's going on, and they can tell you exactly what to do, what to click, how to do it, or they just do it for you, and um, you know, or both. They'll explain how to do it and do it for you. It's totally up to you, but their customer service is beyond anything I've ever seen. I yeah, mean, they're just I like amazing. It. When I when I call them, I'm just blown away. I wish every company could have this level of customer service. Um, in fact, you, usually you talk to the same people, the same person, or it, in fact, maybe. But you um, you tell them what's going on, and they tell you this is why, and this is how you fix it, and you know you can do this, or they'll do it for you. Like I said, they're brilliant. They the really thing hold your I hand. Like, the other thing I like is when you go to their web page, it's not so cluttered that you just don't yeah. know what's there, yeah. what's not. <laughs> yeah, some of those uh, some web hosting companies, you go there, and it's just like this convoluted mess of stuff everywhere and you're like whoa you just get a headache looking at it but with this it's just very simple register a domain hosting it's simple it's like that's all there what else do you need that's really all you want and there's a phone number right at the top call 24 7 and you don't even have to go to the website you can just call or you can go to the website get the number and call but um they're they're there for you they're there to help you and they have you know serious uptime um very very reliable they even have um, web, or, you know, uh, what do you call it? Hosted applications that install with oh, yeah. one click, mm-hmm. which we use a lot. There's one called um, 
uh, Boonex Dolphin. Boonex Dolphin, which is a social network. It's a free open source, which is, we, you know, I don't you may already know, I'm a very big advocate of free open source software, FOSS software. This is software that runs on a website. So you, you'd have your own website, and you can run, like if you want to start your own Facebook for people who are into bird watching in Seattle, you can set up birdwatchersofseattle.com, and you can, with one click, literally one click, you can install this software that runs on the site that's free open source. It's called Boonex Dolphin. It's free open source. It's absolutely free. And it automatically installs, and it makes a social network for whatever purpose you have. You can have as many as you want. And uh, it's, it's kind of like Facebook. So you can have people connect for a special interest group. A lot of people are getting turned off by Facebook because it's too much, too, too massive. But a little group ab- about a specific targeted thing is, you know, is very attractive. If people are interested in that thing, they can join this. And they can also, it's almost like a directory of people that are involved in that. Anyway, that's just one application and it installs uh, with a click. But not only that... They support you. When you have a problem, you call Arvix, and they will actually help you with that application, which a lot of companies don't do. I mean, if they even have the ability to install it for you automatically, they're not going to support it. They're mm-hmm. not going to be there. You're going to you're going to get a press one for this, press two for that. Please wait on hold and all that. And then they're going to say, "Sorry, we don't support the software." <laughs> you know, but these people do, and they have a forum also where you can you know post a question and other users can answer it. But usually, somebody from Arvix does. They're mm-hmm. just they're really brilliant. They're right on top of it. They're not an enormous company, so you actually um, they're they're like real human. And um, I love their support. I love their reliability. And the price is crazy. Yeah. We play, pay a small, small, small fee, and we have unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage, unlimited number of domain names uh, can be hosted all on one account. Yeah. It's What more could you want? Check so. it out. Arvix.com. A-R-V-I-X-E.com. Tell them you heard about it. From Bruce and Ed live yeah. in New York. You can anyway. go uh, <laughs> to our webpage and click on the link from right. there if you'd like. Right, BREDTV.com, and then in the show notes section, there'll be a link there that'll take you right there if you forget how to spell it. The next sponsor we want to thank is Dropbox, another company that's uh, a startup. It's not really a startup anymore. Now it's so big, it's um, it's so popular because it's amazing. They have created a whole new market. What do you call it? A whole new um, model? Paradigm for saving? Yeah, I can't think of the word, but... You know, a whole new business model, a whole new niche, and uh, it's called Dropbox, just like it sounds, D-R-O-P-B-O-X dot com. What Dropbox does is so cool. You can, you go to Dropbox dot com and you install the software, or just go to BreadTV dot com, click on the link, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you install the software. Now, the software, there's a version for Windows, Mac, Linux, for Ubuntu Linux, your uh, Android phone, your iPhone, there's a version for pretty much everything. You install this little software, and what happens is you store all your important documents inside of a folder on your computer or device called Dropbox, right? Mm -hmm. And in there, uh, everything that you put in there is backed up to the internet, it's synchronized to the internet. Okay, it's backed up out to, to, to your account on Dropbox. Uh, And you get two gigabytes for free, by the way, completely free per person. Each person gets two gigabytes absolutely free. There's no sense in not having it. It's crazy. Plus, you get more space if you refer other friends and so on. But anyway, okay. So it syncs it out to to the web, right? And then it also syncs it to all your other computers. So we have, you know, if we have 11 computers sitting around and uh, three phones... Whatever, if I save a document, a spreadsheet, a presentation, doesn't matter what it is, any kind of file, even pictures, movies, music, anything, if I put it on my Dropbox, boom, it's also on Ed's computer and this computer and that computer and the phone and it's ac- accessible everywhere. Backed up, you know, if you've got 11 computers and two phones, it's backed up 13 times. Plus, well, 14 times, counting the internet. Mm-hmm. Plus, I could be over at my friend Mimi's house. And I can just get on the on the web. Mm-hmm. I can be anywhere, anytime, and get on the web and go to Dropbox.com, and I can log in to my account, and I have access to all my files. All your data. Everything. So it's like your file server on the web. Yeah. It's it's just yeah. brilliant. Who thought of this? Yeah. Well, I love the fact that they first they have the app for the Android and the iPhone, which is 
works flawlessly. Somewhat new. And but it's great. Uh, one of the best features that I love personally is that I can actually right click on a file mm-hmm. and um, and then copy the link and then send you a link of whatever folder, I mean file, I'm sorry, uh, that I want to sh- either share with you or with someone else and uh, and it's very easy you just get the link and then you can download the document that I'm sending you and it's perfect. Any file, so any file that you can put on your computer of any type you can do this with, what he's talking about so what's really brilliant is um, of any size too so um, for ex- as long as it'll fit within your Dropbox you know, quota you can do this, you put it inside of a folder called Dropbox and then inside there there's a folder called Public so as long as it's within that structure you can right click on it and, and it says get public URL and that gives you a link and it, it puts it on your clipboard, right? So then you can go and email that link to somebody. So for example, if I have a movie. Yeah, but the, you don't have to have a Dropbox account for this, what I'm talking about. No, I know, I know. But if I have it, if I have the movie and I want to share it, then I have to have the Dropbox account. Yes. Right. But what I'm saying is, let's say I have a movie. There's a great movie, Sita Sings the Blues, and it's... Creative Commons license, free, shareable. It's not copyrighted. You know, uh, you can share it legally. So um, I have that in my Dropbox public folder. I go to that movie, and it doesn't matter how big it is. It could be a gigabyte or two gigabytes or whatever. It could be a whole two gigabyte file. I right-click, copy Dropbox public URL. Then I go to an email, and I email that URL to someone, and they get this link in their email that says http colon slash slash blah 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 they just right click save link as and then they're downloading that movie directly from my dropbox it could be a movie it could be a photo you can actually take you know hundreds of photos and put them and zip them into one zip file and you can do the same thing with that zip file so they right click now they're downloading a zip file you can use it to share files um, or entire sets of files if you zip them movies, music, anything with your friends uh, mm-hmm. or coworkers or whatever just by sending them a link so they don't have to have Dropbox. They don't have to install it or nothing. You can send um, you can send them this via, of course, via anything, via email, via text message, via instant messaging, chat, anything. So mm, it's really, great. really, really useful. So if I want I have this public domain, you know, Creative Commons movie and I, I can just you know, send you this link in a chat room or in whatever, and you can just everybody can just right click and boom, they're downloading it. It's a great. I mean, you can't email. You know, as you may know, you can't email a file that's g- bigger than ten megabytes. Usually, mm-hmm. uh, if you have Gmail, I think the limit goes up. If it's from Gmail to Gmail address, the limit goes up to like twenty-five megabytes, I think. But anything bigger than that, it's it's a pain. You, it's like now you got to deal with something. But with this. As long as you put it in your Dropbox, you got a URL, you can send it to anybody. And mm-hmm. you're not actually sending it, you're just sending the link. And then they, they're getting it directly from your Dropbox. And when they do, they can't change it. They can't modify it or delete it or anything. All they can do is download it. Right. So you can send someone a spreadsheet or you know, anything. They, they can modify the copy they have, but they can't, they can't actually access to change your copy. Right. It's great. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> great, great technology. <laughs> And what else is it? There's, so the backup, I mean, the backup in and of itself, that your, all your irreplaceable family photos, um, any documents that you create for your business or personal use, your um, photos, home movies, anything like that, you have backed up in as many places as you have computers plus the web. You can, you can be on a trip to Africa and you don't have any computers or phones with you. You can go to a cyber cafe and access that stuff. It's just amazing. You can even upload things from a browser if you log on to your account you can upload things to your Dropbox even if you don't have if your computer with you as long as you're right. to the internet and what I do is if I'm going traveling I, uh, I'll put like you know whatever movies I want to watch or music and uh, and you know when I'm at my mom's I can just download it there and press favorite and then mm-hmm. it actually downloads it into my uh, flash drive right. and so then I can watch it that's the thing that people often ask is like, well, what if my phone, you know, my phone doesn't have enough memory to hold, you know, if, if my Dropbox has 120 gigabytes, my phone doesn't have 120 gigabytes. Well, with these phone applications, they have, like on the iPhone, 
uh, for example, or the Android, you can select the files that you want access to, and you just put it like you just like on Gmail, you click a star. So like you star them, almost like you're favoriting these files. And the ones that you put a star by, they're going to get downloaded to your phone, and the rest will not actually be on your phone. So you can just download the ones, you favorite the ones you're going to access. So if you're going to be on an airplane and you want to watch these movies and listen to this, these audio, music, podcasts, whatever, read these documents and so on, you can just click all the ones you want and then they'll download while you have internet. And then later when you're on the airplane or the subway or whatever, um, out of the country, you can actually then, it'll be a local copy on your phone. Mm -hmm. And then later when you're done with it, you just unfavorite them and it frees up that space. It basically deletes the copy that's on your phone. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you need internet to access it, obviously. Right. Very, very smart. So check it out, dropbox.com. All right. And then our third sponsor today is Mountain Rose Herbs. It's spelled just like it sounds, mountainroseherbs.com. And you can go to, again, redtv.com and look at the show notes and click the link there to to be taken there. Tell us about Mountain Rose Herbs. Yeah, I actually order from them quite often. And they're actually a co-op and they specialize in um, organic and, uh, you know, eco-friendly products uh, of all types. There's essential oils. uh, I buy... Most of all my uh, superfoods, especially, and uh, primarily that you're getting a great, great price because you're buying in bulk, uh, like a pound or so. But you can share a lot of these superfoods with other people that are into it if you don't want that much uh, food. But the price is, you can't compare it. And uh, you're assured the quality. So it's if you if you're into... Um, you know, buying different types of herbs or supplements, uh, superfoods. I get a lot of... What are superfoods for those who don't know? Uh, well, I get like my bee pollen, uh, my algaes, al- algaes or algaes, whatever, uh, like spirulina, chlorella. Um, I get them from there and, um, and they, they're very quick with the delivery process and, uh, and the price is unbeatable on the internet. Um, I'm... Uh, they also call me Dr. Frugal, so I'm always looking for the best place to buy things, and I don't want to compromise as far as quality, and so this, you get both the quality and you get the best price, so check them out, mountainroseherbs.com. Go to our website and uh, click the link, and, um, and I'll take you right there. In the show notes at breadtv.com. The... Uh they everything they have is what, organic and there's a big emphasis on it being sustainable agriculture right yeah and, and they're all about um yeah that it may not be locally grown because you're getting it through the no internet. no no it's uh, but you sustainable know, all organic. over the world yes mm-hmm. okay a sustainable organic and excellent excellent quality and excellent prices so mm-hmm. the best can't mm-hmm. beat that so anyway, yeah, go to breadtv.com, click on the show notes, and you'll see the links to um, all of our sponsors. And when you contact, even if you don't buy anything from them, if you contact them and thank them for sponsoring Bruce and Ed Live from New York and bringing us to you, we really, really appreciate that. So, um, all right, now the next topic I wanted to discuss is one that um, y- we were talking about just this morning, and that is... Um, this whole idea that there's so much confusion uh, about the idea of downloading on the internet. There's just tons and tons of misunderstanding and compu- confusion. Some of it is intentional, and some of it, most of it's not. But there's lots of misinformation and misconceptions about it. So I wanted to just clarify a few things for you guys. So I'm 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 here. You heard it here first. <laughs> I want to educate. You everybody about this all right the first concept is there's nothing illegal about downloading okay the idea in itself of downloading something on the internet obviously there's nothing illegal about downloading in um, in it in and of itself when you're on the internet that's basically what you're doing most of the time you're downloading every web page you see you're downloading information when you download a program and install it you're downloading something you're you know when you're on YouTube you're downloading video and watching it as you're downloading so the the phrase downloading is used improperly in many cases um, it's not downloading that's illegal it's what you're downloading 
all right? That's the critical, critical point. So just to clarify that. when Now, there are different ways to download things. If you go to a website that says download whatever here, you click it, you're doing a direct download, also called an HTTP download, just a normal download through your browser. But there are many other ways to download. There's download streaming like YouTube or many, you know, internet, radio. You may be watching us right now um, by downloading it. You can, if you go to our web page, you can download the video file. It says right click on this link, save link as, you download the video file or the MP3 audio file. That's another way of downloading straight through your browser. Streaming it through YouTube is another form of downloading. There are other technologies for downloading like um, BitTorrent and peer-to-peer -peer clients um, like eDonkey and all sorts of different things, Frostwire and so on. <clears throat> now BitTorrent probably gets the most notoriety because BitTorrent is a technology. It's also the name of a company, which also confuses people. But primarily, BitTorrent is a protocol. It's a technology. Um, it's kind of like a language that's mm -hmm. spoken on the internet. Okay, it's called BitTorrent. And BitTorrent in itself is completely legal. <laughs> All it is is a way to send a file from one place to another and, and share it with multiple people. So there's nothing illegal about BitTorrent. Um, it it's all about what you're downloading, what you're uploading, what you're sharing. So the copyrighted material is obviously the issue. And even that, in some countries, it's explicitly legal. There are many countries where it's absolutely legal to share copyrighted material, but not in this country. In the USA uh, and, and UK, and it's in Japan, I believe, it's definitely not legal here. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I want to clarify that because people need to know BitTorrent's legal, downloading movies from the theater is not in the U.S. All right. So the reason... Or even uh, TV shows. Yeah. yeah, movies, TV, music, anything that is copyrighted is not legal in the U.S. So um, now, there. okay, so that having been stated, if you understand that, that helps. That's the background. Now, there is um, the issue of there are BitTorrent programs, like on Windows, the most popular one is called uTorrent, U-T-O-R-R-E-N-T dot com. You go to that website, you download this free little tiny program, absolutely free, and it's really easy to use. It's called uTorrent. And on Windows, that's how it is. If you use Ubuntu Linux, it's built in to the operating system. Uh, you have to Google it for Mac because there's a new one all the time. I'm not sure which one's the best one at the moment. But anyway, you have a little program called a BitTorrent client, and then you can download torrents. Now, if you, again, if you're downloading things that are public domain or things that you created um, and you are, are sharing with the world, or anything that says Creative Commons License Shareable, if it has a shareable Creative Commons license, it's absolutely legal to, to it's as legal as sending someone an email. Okay, there's nothing illegal about it. So they want you to don't share be it. confused. Mm -hmm. Right, don't be confused about that. So, uh, but if you're downloading TV shows from broadcast or cable TV, you know, um, or movies from the movie theater and things like that, that's not going to be legal in this country. So mm -hmm. it's about what you're downloading and uploading. Mm -hmm. Now I have an issue with that because you go to a, a website and you read something that looks interesting, but it doesn't tell you can. It says you can download this through a torrent or whatever, but it doesn't really tell you this is copyrighted material and doing this is l illegal. You know, until after the fact, you find it, you see it, and then it's like you realize, oh well, this is copyrighted material. But you don't know ahead of time, so I have well, you know, I know. problems it's, with that. It's kind of like a lot of things. It's, it's the burden uh, is on you to know what you're downloading and to know, if, like, you have reasonable knowledge that that would be copyrighted. If it's something that says, you know, uh, Entourage TV series from HBO, you can be sure that's copyrighted. If it's something from ABC, NBC, CBS, you know, one of the television networks, of you know, it's copyrighted if it's a movie that was in the theater it's copyrighted you know and basically unless it specifically says creative commons license shareable or public domain then you can pretty much assume that it's copyrighted if you want to be very very safe then just don't do it unless it says that 
you could, I mean, you know, one of the things that you brought up this morning is, what if you clicked a link and it you downloaded something that was mislabeled? Like if it said it was, uh, you know, something shareable, but you actually downloaded it and it was uh, Avatar, you know, and that that could happen. But obviously, you know, if, if it's a direct download, it's up to, well, it's a little bit confusing here because if you were downloading a link directly, you're not using BitTorrent. If you didn't know what it was and because it, and, and, it was mislabeled until you got it, you know, your legal responsibility here would be just as soon as you recognize what it is to delete it. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's a direct download from a website, they're going to go after the person who has the website. Who's distributing The it. person who has, yeah, is hosting on the website. Um, if it's a, now, the way BitTorrent works is a little bit different. And I know it's a little bit technical, a little bit confusing, but it's not that bad. When you use BitTorrent, what happens is there's a whole swarm. There could be anywhere from two, three to 300 people all in connected, all these computers connected to each other, sharing this pieces of this file until everybody has the whole thing. That's how it works. So it's almost like if you took the phone book, a New York, New York City phone book, the white pages, and I had one copy and there were a dozen people and we all wanted to end up with a copy. And so what I did is I just tore out you know, 20 pages and gave them to each person and then they all were busy at their photocopiers copying those pages and when they got done, they would find out who else needed pages 1 to 100 and then they'd give them to that person and so mm-hmm. on and so on. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's how BitTorrent works in a way. Mm-hmm. It, it shares among these 300 people uh, it broadcasts and says, what pages do you need? What pages do you have? And the computer obviously does this super, super, super fast. So it's like sending little bits among these 300 people until everybody has the complete copy. That's why it's so fast, because everybody is sharing, everybody's downloading, and everybody's uploading bits and pieces of the thing all at the same time, simultaneously. Right. So anyway, <clears throat> what happens is, if, um, first of all, if a copyright owner... If the like you know the Motion Picture uh, Association MPAA, uh, basically the copyright police for uh, film and television, a lot of uh, th- media like that, what they do is they will actually uh, take one of their computers and they'll install a BitTorrent client on it, and then they'll go and download their own movie or their own TV show. And when you're when they're downloading it, they can see a whole list of all the computers they're connected to, those computers which are also downloading and uploading this thing at the same time. Mm-hmm. So they take that list, their IP addresses. They take that list, the entire list of IP addresses, and associated with the date and time, what day and time, minute and second it is right now. Mm-hmm. And from that information alone, they can parse it out and see which they which cable, uh, you know, ISP is associated with each of those. Mm-hmm. So there'll be some from Comcast, some from Time Warner, some from whoever, whoever, whoever. And then they submit these these complaints, complaint letters to those companies. Now, Time Warner gets a batch of these, and these are all Time Warner IP addresses. Then Time Warner has to go and look up this IP address on this and date and this time and see who, which account holder had that IP address at that date and time and minute and second. Mm-hmm. Then they say, okay, that's John Smith, 123 Main Street, apartment 23. That that person they have to notify. So then they notify that person and say, we, you know, we got this complaint that you were downloading Avatar or whatever. So that's how you get a complaint letter from the ISP. If you're downloading something that's copyrighted, that's how they they catch it and they'll give you a warning. They'll give you a, a few warnings. Mm-hmm. Um, usually when people get a warning, if they do that and they get a warning like that, they're going to stop right away. But um, that's how that happens. Now, the other thing that can happen if you're using BitTorrent is the ISP itself can detect that your transmitting and receiving this BitTorrent protocol because they just look at all the data that's going to and from your internet connection and if they see this language, this protocol called BitTorrent coming to and from your computer, Mm -hmm. some of them will actually automatically throttle your speed down Oh yeah. because they assume that you're uploading and downloading vast quantities of, of data, music, videos, music, you know, movies and so on 
TV shows and all that. And mm. so they'll just take your 20 megabit per second service and just grrr, throttle the speed way down. Obviously, people are outraged by that. Um, it, it sh- it's, it's wrong, in my opinion, it, and it shouldn't be legal. If it is, it should not be legal for them to do that, and it's gone all the way to Congress and so on. But the, because the fact is that BitTorrent itself is not illegal, and if I'm downloading and uploading uh, movies that are shareable, then there's absolutely no reason for them to throttle my speed down that I'm paying for. All right. Now, um, but that's something that can happen. So if you're using BitTorrent to share legal content, you can still have your internet throttled down by these ISPs that do that. Um, if you're using BitTorrent to download illegal content that's copyrighted, then you'll have that effect and you'll also probably get warning letters from your ISP. Um, and ultimately, after a few warnings, I don't know how many, but they may actually cut off your internet. Right. So, not or worse, they could actually, you know, which may actually be a good thing because um, they might cut off your internet before you end up in a lawsuit and having to defend a lawsuit from the MPAA, which, you know... Um, they're ruthless. They're just famous for being ruthless. So mm-hmm. obviously, you don't want to do that. But if you want to use BitTorrent, which you have every right to do, and you want to download and upload uh, legal Creative Commons licensed shareable content, for example, you want to let download a, a, the latest distribution of Linux and it's uh, you know a couple gigabytes or something, there's absolutely no reason you shouldn't be allowed to use BitTorrent. And you should use it. And the ISP is none of their business. And it's completely legal. So, here's what we recommend. There's um, a new service called put.io, and that's the actual website. It's put.io. Instead of .com, it's .io. I don't know what country that represents, but anyway, the website is just put.io. It's so cool. What it does is it allows you to create an account. It's not free. Um, I think there's three price plans. The middle one is like nine dollars and ninety-five a month or something, and it lets it, that gives you like fifty gigabytes of bandwidth. But what it does is it allows you to go and um, put the torrent, the link to the torrent file, into their site. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then the the BitTorrent transmission and activity doesn't have to anything to do with your computer. It's kind mm-hmm. of, if you think about how Gmail works, mm-hmm. in Gmail, you know, or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail, any of those web-based emails, the email actually isn't on your computer. The email is living out there on the web. Well, this is like BitTorrent, but it's living out there on the web. So what happens is, if you download Cita Sings the Blues, a Creative Commons licensed full-length motion picture that's legal to download, mm-hmm. right? Um, you can put the torrent into put.io, the, the dot .torrent file, the link to it, right? Right. And the... The, the movie will download from the BitTorrent swarm to your put.io account, and it will happen super, super, super fast, by the way, because they're mm-hmm. right on the, the, they're right on the backbone of the Internet. So it happens at gigabit speed. Oh, all right? nice. So it's like really, really fast. You'll be shocked. You know, a whole movie you'll download in four minutes. You're like, whoa, never seen anything that fast. Then once it's done, it'll be in your account. And mm-hmm. then what you can do is you can just click download, and then you download the movie directly from put.io straight down to your computer, which is also super, super fast. Mm-hmm. And it's not in BitTorrent protocol. Mm-hmm. So, so they're like in security or an like intermediary. an intermediary. Right? An intermediary. It protects your privacy. You never, you're never uploading anything. You're only downloading, and, and you're downloading only directly from put.io. You're never using BitTorrent protocol. So you'll never get throttled Throttled, down because you're using BitTorrent protocol. Um, You'll never have to worry about uploading anything because you're not uploading anything. And you have complete privacy, too. There's no way that anyone is going to detect, you know... That it's you. Yeah, I mean, whatever it is. So, um, obviously, we only recommend doing this with, you know, shareable... Creative Commons licensed public domain material, unless you live in a country where it's legal, that's that's different. But in the U.S., we rec- you know, or U.S., U.K., Japan, several countries, it's uh, explicitly illegal. <laughs> then you want to only do this with shareable stuff. But it's better than doing it directly, and that's why because 
You don't have to worry. Speed. You don't have to worry about anybody getting your IP address and things like that. So anyway, we're out of time. We're out of time. We could just go on and on about this topic. Yeah, um, that's pretty interesting. I um, so we'll curious see to see if more about that. Yeah, we'll talk about it more tomorrow. All right, thanks guys. Thank you run. very much for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Until next time. Ciao. We'll be right here. RedTV.com.